So I just briefly introduced the next uh, panel that is uh, named Queer Shift and uh, is uh, moderated by Francesco Warbert Macarone Parmieri, just I say two words about him. Um, he's an anthropologist, uh, performance artist, curator, also festival promoter and DJ. And uh, also his work is based on sex culture, independent cinema and sociology of emotion. And somehow we could say that this panel is also following the thread we already started at Transmediale with the uh, thematic framework of resource sex. Uh, but this time we are also sp uh, directly speaking about the topology of a network culture uh, a network uh, of queer culture in Berlin. Exactly. Thanks very much, Tatiana, for the invitation. And uh, the, the, um, I want to uh, tie, I want to produce like a little filter as a presentation for the interlocutors here. And I think like that the title, uh, Queer Shift, um, applies to this vision. And for queer shift, uh, I uh, want to relate to uh, some kind of a shifting polarization of what uh, the queer culture and queer scene in Berlin, uh, how it developed, not what. So uh, we are having like a, um, a position here which is like quite critical. It's very interesting to understand how uh, in these last 10 years, a, a space, a distance, a critical distance with the concept of queer culture is produced. So the, the first concept of queer culture is intended as the grounding of an identitarian community based on common languages and purposes in its dialectics with and against the LGBT community and their ter the heterosexual community. This vision is subsumed by the social network economy of Berlin, which uses an, an Enhances rich, mostly Western migration as informational economy. These resources are organized in the platform of Berlin to be pushed in the hands of public institutions and private enterprises without a real sharing. In this perspective, more than an activist thought and action based on a libertarian vision of an identity deconstruction, queer as a concept becomes an aesthetized category or an empty simulacre, a niche defining the fast opening and closing of entertainment markets in the hands of Berlin masterminds. The second shift, the shifting that is going toward the second concept is more or less spontaneously reformulated in an idea of an open network based on the evaluation of individualities and infiltration as the discovering of new territories. Both the under concept of individualities and infiltration as discovering represent a research platform as a, tool, as a tool of cultural, social, and political changing in the sharing of resources. So in the second concept, the subject absorbed critically their position in this narrow liberistic frame of Berlin economy and posed themselves not as counter communities, but as open network, accelerating their multiplicities, opening themselves as resource platforms in which to give more than to take, inserting themselves in the undertexture contradiction of Berlin contemporary art economies and event management methodologies. In this perspective, most of the cultural agent uh, present here on this table uh, can be defined as Berlin long-term survivors. And uh, mm, um, what, what I wanted to say is that like, they, they, they jump beyond their own role as social actors, as they are expected to be in the economical and political dialogue with Berlin, and actualize themselves as territorial actors, producing real changing with a hurricane of proposals. In this term, connecting myself to the tag that had been used yesterday for the presentation of Transmediale and Club Transmediale, uh, these cultural agents or users find themselves not just passively producing the utopia of a Berlin as perceived as golden age in its social network economy, but as a method of event management, cultural production, and analytical vision as resource that produces and enhances black spots and contradictions. So here we have the pleasure uh, to listen and participate to the stories of three cultural actors, actually we are one, two, three, four, 
uh, but one is seen as like uh, a unique form of management uh, that represent like this platform, this network of queer Berlin in a critical perspective to a Berlin gentrification master plan. So uh, on my right, I have the pleasure to have Lena Brown uh, that can be really defined as the queen of Berlin <laughs> with, uh, yeah, with uh, <laughs> her scarlet. Where's scarlet? Scarlet. Okay, Scarlett, like, I actually, you know, met you through Scarlett, I can say, because uh, <laughs> uh, once I uh, stepped inside uh, your new gallery, which uh, I didn't know if it was for yours, and it's called uh, Salo uh, no, no, Gallery Su uh, Su de Cuckoo, yeah. and it's in Weserstrasse, which is like uh, the, 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 the Grenze, the, like the merging uh, between Berlin gentrification and the real Turkish Berlin. And uh, I was uh, like at the ex exhibition of a friend of mine, uh, and there was like this big painting of uh, like your dog, I think. <laughs> so that was a, a way for me to uh, approach to you in a way. And uh, in, through your biography, I, I know that like you're a real witness eye of the queer Berlin, because uh, as you said before, you moved here very early, and then you produce like a psychogeography of traces in the queer Berlin, starting with like the boudoir, arriving to Salon de Cucu, passing through the institution of queer Berlin, we can say that it's like uh, Queen Barbie, then Barbie Dinoff, right? So I, I would like you to tell this, your story of the queer Berlin and the, uh, the art production that you did within to change the queer Berlin too. Thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you all that you are here. Um, I moved to Berlin in the 80s as a student and I study um, science of communication, philosophy and literature. Uh, after I, I made my degree, I wanted to become a director. But after one year, I made just one experience. Uh, every director want to go to bed with me. <laughs> so. <coughs> That this was not uh, my ambition, I started my first <laughs> um, independent place called Bichette, which was the main uh, person in the in a Jewish novel I made my examination in university of. So this was the first place. This was eighty eight, and I did several places in several. Uh, parts of Berlin, mostly in parts which have been not fashionable, I could say. So the first two was, uh, the first was in Kreuzberg, then in Schöneberg, then I was the first one who moved to the east of Berlin and uh, yeah, I could say I started the now existing gallery area <laughs> with my a little bit strange project. Um, I'm an artist, I'm doing something in between performing and uh, fine arts. Uh, I'm a writer, I'm a journalist, I am a curator, and honestly, uh, the rest I would like to discuss with you together because I am not here to speak alone. <laughs> yeah, um, I would like to, uh, for example, for me, uh, my first, let's say, uh, queer interface with Berlin was immediately Barbie Dinoff. And I was uh, reading about this before even coming to Berlin. And uh, uh, it was like a radical choice because still it was contextualized in an urban context that was still radical because it was still Kreuzberg. And uh, it's still perceived uh, as uh, the reference of uh, a Turkish ethnical community that follows like very, uh, I'm generalizing of course, because there are a lot of different <laughs> sub communities, but there's a very strong patriarchal macho approach to places like Kreuzberg or Neukölln. What did it mean to open a place there, like a queer place like Barbie Dinov? Um, uh, uh, I, do not see all these borderlines <laughs> um, which have been in your uh, announcement. For example, 
a lot of queer people was very angry because I speak as well with Turkish macho men. <laughs> But uh, I had no problems with them. I went there to buy my lemons and I went to buy their Waldmeister and as well they delivered my black market drinks because of tax. So I was very good friend with all the Arab uh, and Turkish community. Uh, so I can say if uh, you are friendly to the people, they are friendly to you and honestly, Nobody break into my rooms because I have been a client of them. I bought in their stores. So if you want uh, to do an integration, just talk to everybody and don't say these people are shitty or old fashioned. I don't like this. So uh, wh what were your um, cultural and um, uh, art development lines through your different moments? in Berlin, from uh, the boudoir, through Barbie Dinov, through the cuckoo right now? Um, if I lo locate me somewhere, I, I, I am into Dada, I am into camp, and I'm, I'm into feminism. And I always tried to be between the lines, that means between visual art and performing art. And I always was very much interested in the opinion of other people. So I always tried to give them a place, a stage, for to put out the stuff other people uh, would not show, maybe, I mean. For example, in the moment I show mostly female artists and maybe for other people it's not a big thing, but for the market it's a fucking big thing. So, um, uh, in a way, um, Barbie Dinoff uh, uh, was, uh, I'm referring to Barbie Dinoff because I had like the most, uh, the strongest uh, approach to that. Um, uh, created like this convergence with different um, flux of migration that arrived here. Uh, do you feel Barbie Dinoff uh, as an experience, as uh, the production of uh, a different network on Berlin, or do you feel it uh, as the, an agent of Berlin gentrification? This is a provocation. Mm. Uh, no, it's not a provocation, it's uh, a status quo. Um, I think, honestly, these things came up because I decided maybe to be the first one who allows people which don't speak German to uh, work behind the bar. <laughs> so now it's normal, but in this uh, time uh, it was maybe something new. And so a lot of people from all over the world came to my place because they have been served in English. <laughs> <laughs> this was very, very simple, and uh, there, from this little thing, came up this uh, community. And what, again, was the second thing? Ah, the gentrification, yeah. Okay, after I opened Babi Dinov, because, for example, people like um, Francoise Cactus said, Oh, I don't come to your place, it's too far from Cottbus Sator. So, in this time... At this time, uh, the Schlesische Straße was not very uh, fashionable, <laughs> as some of you remember. So after I opened, I think in the, in the next four months, opened 16 other bars. So, <laughs> and the same happens in Weserstraße. <laughs> uh, it's always good if there's an example, then other people follow, no? <laughs> yes, and speaking about uh, Weserstraße, what are the difference in terms of cultural production in uh, uh, the gallery uh, Sue de Cucu in relationship to your other projects? Uh, after Barbie Dinov, I was a little bit um, tired of serving beer. So I said to myself, um, art is a much more bigger part of my heart. So this has to become the main uh, attraction in my next project. This is what I'm doing in the moment. What is a little bit different as well um, was um, the neighborhood. It was so relaxed. Uh, in comparison with uh, the new Kreuzberg. <laughs> because uh, I left because I saw so many very expensive Kinderwagen. They, they, it was too much to me. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I went into the red light district because before uh, people like me came there, uh, we had 34 bordel. Even my place before was a tuk-tuk karaoke bar uh, made from very emancipated uh, people from Thailand. So uh, this, is the, this was 
different because we had really a mixture of people. It's not that there are only uh, Turkish and Arabian people. We had a lot of Thai people. We had a lot of black people. There was already a mixture. And honestly, they have been in a very good mood because we have so many uh, one euro shops that everybody, even if he is not very uh, rich, could buy any, any day something beautiful. So as I came there, I said, what a relaxed district. Why all the prejudges are sur uh, uh, surrounding me? I did not understand. Now it's a bit li little bit different. You don't hear so much Turkish anymore. People speak English. So uh, I would invite you uh, to uh, propose a question to the Queen of Berlin, to Lena Brown, uh, in relationship to her work and her psychogeographical traces, if you have some. Do you have some questions or some ideas on uh, her work on the territory? I mean, he's in on the she's on the territory since like long time, like 30 years of queer Berlin. I think also maybe this go back to a telephone call we had together where you were really criticizing the fact that we call this panel queer shift because you say you don't feel recognized by this word queer. So I would like to you to explain this better because I think it's an interesting point of view. Yes, uh, I was really um, astonished at, uh, that I get this phone call, but I'm in a way as well proud. I mean, it's nice to talk with you all, but uh, um, I never made myself with the definition queer, because uh, as I came to Berlin, we have been lesbians, then um, we had a lot of parties, <laughs> then uh, the next definition was lesbian, Lesbian and gay parties, then came the definition lesbian, gay and trans uh, parties. So after this I thought the, the word was so long, um, it's the same if you were on the bank account, if you have a long word you cannot underline, you know, you cannot make your signature. And out of this signature came then the word queer. Oh. First I thought it's maybe something to do with this German to think queer, you know, I mean, you, to think between the lines. I, I was not sure why we need this word. Now it's in every mouse and I think a lot of people cannot even think about themselves without the word, but I do not need it. I would really like that that there is something else in the air than the battle about the definitions because I don't like so much boxes. <laughs> Wonderful. And um, I, the, I, I found a very nice definition in an article uh, that actually Tatiana wrote uh, uh, in a magazine uh, of your idea of queer culture. The, it was an, uh, an article on Exit Magazine in 2005, and you were defining queer culture actually as a network. So not just like a fusion uh, mm, tying itself to a market niche, but a juxtaposition of ideas and bodies in a flux. So do you really, do you still think in terms of queer culture in this perspective or something changed? Um, that was a rhetoric question <laughs> that changed, uh, changed a lot in the last uh, time before it happens to the gay scene, um, the gay scene got a target group of Bexpeer, and after this, a lot of things changed. And I think um, if uh, 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 underground, um, if underground people start to defi define themselves, they start to be a target group because a, a target group lives from a definition, and uh, so. I uh, I was in this scene because we had the same taste, the same philosophy, the same way of going on stage, the same aesthetic stuff. I mean, it's more or less about the, c the content, not about the definition. So uh, maybe we don't need now the target group to be queer. We just should uh, see what we like aesthetically, what uh, is our thing, not this against, against, uh, this and that. So it's so boring and it does not bring any good atmosphere. I like the stuff which comes directly from the heart, from the, all the different hearts, which are my so-called family. 
maybe my English is not so good. <laughs> no, it works. Do you have any other questions to Lena Brown? So um, uh, I thank you very much for your intervention. <laughs> Scarlett is happy too, you see? <laughs> and uh, I would like to speak uh, about uh, another witness I, whose name is uh, Walter Kressel, that I'm having on my left. And um, uh, he has a lot of different perspectives on queer Berlin because uh, <coughs> uh, he moved here in uh, the end of the Y2K, we can say. And uh, he... Um, was involved in the queer scene uh, in the US, and he moved here and he started to work uh, either as a cultural promoter of queer events and uh, as a, a witness eye journalist about queer contents happening in Berlin through um, a very well known uh, magazine which is called Ex Berliner. And um, so, uh, what I would like to ask you. Uh, is um, how did you see these shiftings and these slidings of the queer Berlin in the last year with a, a tribal perspective? So the perspective of somebody that is really in the scene, uh, seeing uh, what's going on, bringing the flyers around, communicating events from uh, the intellectual point of view through your ex-Berliner work and from a migrant point of view, so the point of view of an American who is moving here. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm rather a, a still a newer fish in the pond, but I, I threw myself in really deeply. I've, I've been here since, um, by end of Y2K, I assume you meant the decade. Uh, so since 2009. Um, uh, yeah, and, and some of the first work I got was flowering for um, Poopsie Club, which is sadly gone now, but um, things change. And, um, and then I've also done some recent flowering for Gagan as well. But um, the bulk of my energy is spent working through Ex Berliner as the web editor there, and <clears throat> I oversee both the content, the journalistic content that appears on the website as well as the events calendar. And um, because of my participation in the scene before coming to Ex Berliner, um, Ex Berliner now, there's now a conduit for, for this culture to flow through Ex Berliner. Um, so I'm sorry, and, and, and more of the question was? No, the question was like, um, how do you see this queer shifting of the last year in Berlin uh, as a promoter, as a journalist in ex Berliner, and as an American coming here? Um, I'm not so sure I've been here long enough to see it shifting in a radical way. I mean, I have a really small window of perspective. I mean, I've seen things come and go. I've seen spaces come up I've seen and go. I've seen spa I've clubs come up and go. Um, you know, I, everybody speaks about the gentrification happening, and, and I'm sure that's happening, and um, problems with tourists, or, or, or too many tourists, or whatever your op uh, opinion is on the tourist situation. Um, but I don't really have the foreground to say that the tourist pro that there is a, a, a tourist problem or a gentrification problem in Kreuzberg per se. My opinion of queer life and the queer scene in Berlin is that it's it's it's. I think it's quite steady. I think it's it, I think it's still I think it's still important, and I still think it's I think it's much more diverse, and there's much more opportunity in Berlin. Um, for queer life than there is almost anywhere else in the world. Um, despite the idea that, that um, Berlin is getting gentrified and that it's becoming more difficult, which is, is undoubtedly and statistically true, it's still comparatively to any other major city, any other capital in the Western world, um, incredibly accessible on some levels. Of course, if you look at it from the perspective of an, Ameri of an American coming here and actually trying to make a real mark, it's a little more difficult. Um, I, you know, I don't have a Schengen Zone passport, um, so I had to find other uh, tools with which to stay here, which ended up being marriage, and it's quite funny because... Um, so you're married. 
Yeah, I'm married. I mean, the, 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 the radical politics in me when I was much younger, you know, I was completely like, why, 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 why do we want to assimilate? Why, why do we have to be like heterosexual culture? Um, and the irony is, for a lot of Americans, especially recently, is that we came here and, and we, we took advantage of that institution. I, just yesterday, there was, well, she was an American, but she didn't have a Schengen Zone, a Schengen Zone um, passport, and, and other people have taken advantage of marriage to, to uh, stay here in Berlin long enough to actually make an impact, not just the three months we're allowed to stay here before we have to go back. Um, uh, y you were running like a, a riot club, uh, a riot girl, a rock and roll club uh, uh, back in the U.S. Uh, what are the different model in queer cultural production in U.S. and here in Berlin? What kind of differences are you say are you seeing? Um, the model in terms of queer cultural production. Uh, I don't know if there's a difference. Um, in how it was produced, I just think there was less options. I, I, I definitely felt like there was there was only two ways of being in San Francisco, um, and it's simplifying a bit. But there was there was the Castro, and there was mainstream gay culture, and in a way they felt they had won. And not that I'm even looking at looking at it in terms of battles, but they had kind of won whatever was to be won, and they had their ghetto, and that was good enough. And then there was like alternative culture, which kind of just lumped itself together in a jellied mass because nobody had any prime directive or there was um, there's not specified scenes and I'm not saying that the lines need to be drawn either but I mean we all went to the same parties we all talked to the same people I mean yeah um, the artist I mean it was great because the artistic lines weren't so drawn but on the other hand you only had one option of what to do on a Friday night here it's completely different although I do see a lot of the same people um, I can go weeks on end without seeing them and it's it's not as if everybody went into hiding it's that there's there's so much to, to take part in and there's so much to do yeah. uh, um, you got involved in in, um, in a film lately right a few of them. <laughs> oh wow well, uh, <laughs> no, I'm speaking. I'm, I'm speaking. Yeah, 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 of course. So, which is, uh, ma uh, sorry, uh, um, help me to remind the title Mommy's Home. Mommy's Coming. Coming, right. Uh, that was presented at the last Berlinale, right? And uh, it was a, a film engaging queer culture and independent porn. Uh -huh. uh, and I remember we had like an exchange about that on Facebook. And you asked me what I was thinking about that, and then I say that was like, a, that was like the beauty of like this uh, tactical strategy of irony about sexuality, which is beautiful, and even like the uh, transfeministic approach to pornography as a tool of political action, which uh, I um, share. Uh, but then, in the same time, uh, the character were proposing the stereotype of the typical. Uh, um, rich migrant of Berlin that comes to Berlin and say, ah, I'm here, I'm in Berlin, I am queer, I am doing porn. Uh, don't you think that this is a, a stereotype model that is used by a Berlin master plan to produce a flux of resources that, as I said before, are pushed inside specific ends and not redistributed? Um, I, I don't know who's behind the Berlin master plan. Uh, I could. <laughs> no. I mean, there, there was, for example, there was like a very beautiful article on the, the last ex Berliner. You know, the public money are re redistributed uh -huh. in theater institution and how the theater institution redistributes, you know, the methodology, which is very difficult to exceed in a way. So there's like this flux, this migration flux that produce a resource that produce money that are going to speci specific areas, being them public or, or private. And I feel that, like, in that film, that m no, I don't know if somebody saw it or not, but it's like this, the production of this uh, queer subject as a stereotype, as a machine for this mechanism. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I certainly think that it, it's, it contributes to some sort of... Um, idea of Berlin as a queer mecca for sure, and whether it's a, a tourist postcard or a, a, a site for, um, I don't know, questioning what the, the grander picture, um, 
I'm not sure. I didn't, I had no real involvement in the film. Um, I certainly agree with the opinion that it did paint this kind of like Parisian stroll about image of Berlin that's not true and that anybody else's, um, like the, any sort of struggles were not highlighted at all. It was a complete fantastical vision of people who could walk up and down or walk through flats and hotels and have sex at any time and that there's no problematics with the neighborhood or there's no problematics with straight culture at all. It's, inc I mean, you could submit it to the, if there was a queer gay tourism board, uh, you know, Sigasol or whatever, um, definitely could paint a, a nice picture for people to follow. Um, and it is kind of a shame in that way that this gets done, but I think it was done from an outside perspective. It was ob uh, obviously done from an outside perspective. Cheryl Dunye doesn't live here. And Berlin can't, is, is easy to fall in love with in that way. If you come at the right time, sure. And that's why you do end up with all these, uh, you know, post-tourism uh, post tourists, the ones that you know, save a little money after college, come here, rent the flat for three months, increase the, increase the rents and increase the cost of living here, and then leave. And, and then th there's, no real, there's no real input back into Berlin other than what they've used out of it. Um. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, for example, when I see like, there's like this kind of uh, uh, promotion of Berlin, of marketization of Berlin as a, a city of resources as the city that offered the possibility to become what you are in a Dalesian perspective, you know? Uh, and, and in the same time, it's, it's the marketization of a certain city, you know, that calls people from the outside, like proposing the utopia, the golden age of Berlin, the Berlin of uh, art, the Berlin of politics, the Berlin where history ended, the Berlin of sexuality, of electronic music and club culture, you know? And then you arrive here, and uh, what you find is like uh, the house market is rising like hell. You are pushed to be self-standing, like freelance, but then you're not really finding anything around. So, and then you have to find a place to stay, but of course all the house for Walter, all the house for Waltung wants specific documents, you know, like the work, like, you know, the stufa and everything. You know, so then you arrive here, you know, looking for these resources, you know, and what you find is like pure capitalism, you know, pure market uh, that like is produced with the fake uh, postcard, you know, of the uh, I history of Europe social rights, you know, and the queer Berlin, you know. So I think that there's this l double level that has to be criticized. And I think that this is the research that has to be put on the table a as a tool for a real changing in Berlin, I think, you know. So, uh, would you like to uh, have some questions uh, with, um, well, I, I have a last question yeah. <laughs> and then I leave the space. Crass hole. Uh -huh. Why? I mean, is it tied to, <laughs> to crass or is it tied to holes or all together? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's crass and hole. It's a crass asshole. It's a fun way to spell a last name, CR asshole. It was me being 19 and punk and not giving a fuck and really not wanting to put my real name down on my journalism because who the hell cares? <laughs> right there, the name says enough, and then, you know, hopefully you'll read the article or whatever. So, Do you have any questions of Mr. Walter Cress Hole? Okay. Um, don't you, like, I heard you speaking a lot uh, about tourists, and I wish, like, you to explain me, I mean, I have, like, the feeling that there is, the, like, a misleading use of uh, tourists. Aren't you from the United States? I'm from Italy. A lot of people are from all over the world. We're all living in Berlin. Who is the tourist at the moment? <laughs> Sure, I'd love to, to, to talk about that. I actually feel the same way. I, 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 I've, I don't know more, any more than you, and that's why I think it actually is a topic. Um, what's really concerned me is I do hear a lot through Facebook, through the media, about tourists, and more and more it's trickled down to DIY action where I've seen um, stickers around uh, Kreuzberg that say tourist and face fisted, and I think this is a very scary idea that you've got something that looks DIY and, and actually it has an anarchist fist next to it. And you know, it's inviting people to violence. And, and therefore, I mean, you, 
it's inciting violence, and it's inciting violence against an unknown other. Right. You don't know, exactly. Right. You don't know whether I'm a tourist or whether I'm an American expat. You don't know whether you're a tourist or an Italian. Um, it's a really heavy topic right now, and I don't know how exactly to deal with it or what the solutions are. I just, I think it's really important to, to talk about the tension that it's, it's creating. Yeah. May I have? Yeah, of course. Uh, if you read um, the history of Berlin, it's all the same. Uh, Berlin was always a city which uh, invited people to come here. Uh, uh, first, it was the Huguenot and other people who had uh, specific um, abilities, for example, they are very good in art craft or handcraft. They were invited from uh, centuries ago to come here. Then in the 20s, it was very fashionable to come to Berlin. Gay people came here, but as well uh, artists came here because cocaine was very cheap, sex was very cheap, yeah, right. sex was very cheap, and they came here. Some people, you can read this in the literature, stood here for a longer while. Others just passed by, took the um, cocaine, the young boys and girls, and as well fur was very um, cheap, but now it's not fashionable. So they came, and a lot of them wrote later in their books, oh my God, what a city. I was so happy that I was back home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I totally agree with you, with the um, dialectic between a tourist and a migrant, because uh, there are two very big sociological categories to uh, define. And I think that, that this like, political rhetorics against tourists is completely uh, wrong, because one has to understand the context, the frame in which this process is going on, and not actually the effects of it as the cause. So um, I think that there's like a, a, a clear uh, project of uh, pushing people in Berlin to take their money and their soul off. But then if you survive, you're able, if you're able to produce uh, a, an environment to create a market and to uh, lead specific scene. And I think that this create a contradiction against the master plan. And uh, speaking about that, uh, I would like to introduce um, the freshest <laughs> project of Berlin, uh, which is called Homopathic, and uh, it's uh, represented uh, by uh, uh, Danilo Rosato and Antonella Pintus. And uh, there's even like the freshest mastermind we can use uh, again this concept here, which is like the, the, the idea developer and the resident DJ, Mr. Tai. And uh, it's, I think it's like one of the most interesting project. I want first to introduce you. Danilo Rosato um, is a migrant. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming from, uh, from, uh, from, from Italy and uh, actually stu studied at Dams Literature, Cinema and uh, Music Theatre. And uh, he then studied in Valencia and then moved here since 2008. But before, he was promoting a queer event in Bologna called uh, Selected Meats, Carni Scelte. Uh, and then it started here, uh, Homopathic, uh, with uh, Mr. Ties. And uh, it's running this club, uh, which is going on with very interesting actualization in the territory of Berlin. While uh, uh, Anna Bolena, also known as Antonella Pintus, uh, she uh, comes from Sardinia. She's born in Sassari. Uh, she's, uh, she studied uh, psychology and uh, she grounded in Rome uh, an experimental uh, electronic music label, which is called Hidroscalo Dischi, and now he's uh, curating part of the uh, event management uh, of Homopathic. What, really, uh, what I really love between the things about Homopathic uh, is the fact that um, uh, it produces the unknown in Berlin. I mean, all the promotions of Berlin use a language in which they clarify what do you consume as entertainment, with a clear statement of the uh, music market, with clear names of DJs on the flyer, and all the communication of the entertainment events in Berlin explain what happens in the space. Homopathy is just the opposite. It doesn't explain anything. It gives traces, 
and uh, he produced uh, uh, an experience of here and now without giving uh, other elements, if not imaginaries. So uh, I would like uh, uh, to give you the witness uh, with the, this concept and even to explain why the event is called homopathic. Uh, hello, good afternoon. I'm Danilo. I come from Italy, and um, yes, Francesco uh, said I was running um, a party in Italy too. It was called Carni Scelte, um, and then we started this project together with uh, Mr. Thais, uh, uh, that is called Homopathic. Um, before I like, I would like I wish uh, to introduce myself with a little little anecdote. Um, uh, first, when I when I came to my mind to come to Berlin, I actually had to um, to um, tell my grandfather. My grandfather was living in Berlin, was living in Germany, 17 years, so 17 years, and he was actually building the highways. He was working in the construction. He made the so-called autobahn. Say thank you to grandpa. And uh, uh, yeah, I think he was living a shitty life, poor man. I was like living in a barrack in Germany. And, but for, thanks for that, we had uh, actually a good life then in Italy. Um, when I told him, like, I'm going to Berlin, he was like, wow, don't go to Germany. They, they used to call me macaroni. <laughs> and I told him, like, uh, uh, no, grandma, like, I don't think they will call me macaroni. Uh, like, yeah, well, uh, actually, uh, I'm going be to Berlin because of fun. And then he was like, there is no fun in Germany. You have to work. <laughs> At that moment, I gave up. There was no, no, no way to explain him uh, what was Berlin. Uh, what I saw in Berlin, it was impossible to explain what I did in Berlin wh as a tourist. I still do it the same, actually. Uh, but uh, at the, there was a, a generational gap. There was even a cultural gap. I cannot explain to my grandfather what a computer is. Uh, I, I guess that in order, like, and this is really connected to my grandfather at the moment, um, in order to, and to myself, because I am a migrant myself, in, of course, with another terminology and another space and another time. I, uh, in order to introduce better homopathic, I wish to uh, show you first of all our first video, just to, and then I will sc explain you why. <laughs> say thank you to Carlos Garcia Sancho, actually he's our video maker. Thank, thank you, sweetheart. Um, 
actually using the thematic event formula, homopathic uh, uh, focus on a different topic each month, um, sometime political, sometime cultural, sometime uh, totally nonsense. Francesco really like nonsense. <laughs> Um, and homopathic choose not to print, to print uh, flyer or poster. Uh, there was a moment that we started to do little, like little flyers. This is actually the first homopathic flyer in the history. Uh, Antonia, can you like thank you? Open it. <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, we tried like to try like some kind of uh, different technique, but over like. Tried not to print too much paper. There was the, the fly inside. There was some some people had to go to the hospital because actually they took it. And really happened. I'm not joking. Someone took yeah. it. It really happened. Uh, okay. So um, the, the, the our our main word is no paper. So uh, the, we, we stopped producing whatever kind of flyer in paper and we started to do the video with the video flyer. Uh, and we see it's like a, uh, a cheap, a sustainable alternative to printing flyer, kind of a flyer 2.0 in a way. I know it's not so new, but actually we're doing it and we, it's going really, really good at the moment. Um, and using the web as a privileged communication tool, Homopathic is present in a social media serving as a community forum, a virtual extension of the party itself. Uh, we try to always, uh, in a way, like um, cooperate with people. We try to say people, like we're shooting, the, for, for example, of course we're using mainly Facebook, I'm sorry. But yeah, we're using Facebook and mostly we say in the Facebook, like, who wants to come and make the, pa the, homopathic, f the homopathic video flyer, please come. And they always come. Like, there are a lot of people, they feel like coming and they have fun with us and they make the flyer with us and they, of course they feel like part, and they are totally part of the creation process of making, of making the, 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 f the flyer and so part of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the party. Um, uh, mm, sometimes, like uh, we, we we even gave up to doing flyers. We're not doing flyers, just the video flyers. And even in the flyer, electronic flyers, or in what you can see in the internet, usually they are posters or something, but never printed. Uh, we open uh, a kind of uh, possibility to make not the, the do it yourself. Uh, flyer. It's uh, if you if you feel like doing a, fl uh, a flyer for this subject because it's really touch you or you really feel like doing it, do it and we will publish it. It will be our flyer. So people are actually doing the flyer like, and, they, and they're like, can, like, can I publish it? Yeah, of course, you know, pu put in the internet, put in our web page and uh, we will really show you. Even happened, for example, it was really a, an important case when the Pope came to Berlin, hallelujah, uh, we said like, and the the name of the party was Vaticanal. We said, uh, if you want, feel free to create. Let's welcome the Pope as he deserve. Of course, a lot of people started to do a lot of posters with children. But uh, at the end, 11, 11, 11 graphic designers made the, the, the flyers, uh, made the, the posters. And in the end, we just made an exposition out of, out of it. And we, we actually, in this, uh, in this case, printed it. And we made an exposition inside the party. We ran for two days. And uh, people could see the, the work made by 11 artists inside the Homo Party. All this just with the web. I never saw these people before. Um, okay, I would, if, if it's possible, I would, like, I'm, I'm going too long, or no? Like, uh, uh, if possible to show the second, the second one that actually is connected even with the panel we had before, um, and uh, it's Tanz Guerrilla.
need an ethical revolution. Instead of placing money above human beings, we shall put it back to our service. We are people, not products. Okay, like when while w watching now this uh, this video again, I was thinking what all was going on at the moment in Europe and all the world that <coughs> concerning the time use, uh, uh, the bourgeoisie is never in a rush. Uh, for the poor or for the ones having a precarious life, like immigrants uh, or having standard and daily problems, how everybody has, but yeah, maybe some immigrants have more. Um, it is necessarily evasive and utopian to detach uh, from the reality and recreate or represent the of some kind of counterculture. It stands as a conformation of powerlessness, a celebration of uh, impotence, in a way, for using uh, Abdige uh, words. The impotence of challenging the difficult the difficulty sometimes. Uh, the precarious life, the precarious work, the precarious health care, someone of, uh, someone of us as migrants, we don't have, a, for example, crank and gas, how many of our friends? And they don't go to the doctor. It's true. True story. Germany, 2012. And economic, because some of us cannot pay the rent. They don't have the shufa. They don't have the whatever documents to get a proper place where to stay. Uh, but we can still, we can still, and we still able to celebrate the importance of changing the world. There was a, a very nice uh, story about uh, an article that came out uh, in Berliner Zeitung uh, just yesterday. Uh, no, we're not having it right here. But you can show it, you know, like this. Show and tell. <laughs> so maybe it's like uh, interesting to uh, comment this article about homopathic in uh, Berliner Zeitung. Um, it's, it's working? No. Also, <coughs> uh, I have an article uh, was published on the Berliner Zeitung today. Um, also this, this article is terrible because uh, uh, it's uh, distract uh, two years of uh, our hard work to try to do, to, to do something new in Berlin. Um, in queer, post-queer scene is the same for us um, because uh, the journalists um, explain uh, what, uh, what is happening in, uh, in uh, our party. 
but with a uh, with a really a s a very close uh, uh, opinion and view, and 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 is trying to um, explain his party as a, a gay as a, as a, um, supposing that is only a gay bar, and so it's very terrible for us because uh, uh, we are. Um, we are proud to say that in two years we have a very mixed public, um, so uh, schwul, so gays and uh, heteros, um, several several women are attending our party, and uh, um, and and we enjoy um, because uh, we are we are we have uh, nothing against uh, to um, tourist to tourist tourist in Berlin. Um, also, there, there are several people that are attending our party from uh, Italy, Spain, uh, England, and so. And it's it's a very beautiful uh, community. It's a very um, community. It's a community that is uh, increasing every time. Every every party is different, and um, our uh, our attitude is to to put together um, an old school uh, mentality or the school experience from nineties. Uh, 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 specific in, uh, in terms, specific with uh, um, uh, no publicity, no advertising in internet about uh, about lineups, about DJs, and uh, with this uh, all spirit of uh, secret rave and um, full of uh, um, surprises, and uh, uh, together with the, with another important attitude, save the vinyl. Um, and uh, I remember that when I start uh, together with uh, Francesco, Mr. Tice, uh, who called me uh, um, with uh, as of in terms to organize uh, futuring, I come from a uh, specific and a uh, little underground scene of uh, experimental techno hardcore. And um, even if uh, I thought that it was very, uh, very difficult to put together um the house deep house uh, uh, gay scene uh, together with with uh, with uh, my experience uh, but i um i as, as i get this challenge and um i i have to to say that it works and this wo it it works uh, very well so the party have uh, as a um as a success is uh, is, a, is a beautiful uh, experience and, um, and, and uh, sorry for my bad English, <laughs> sometimes it's coming uh, German. Also, <laughs> um, uh, we, as what, what, I th what I found uh, uh, terrible in this article is that, that the, uh, we, uh, we, are, we try really to, f to, 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 um, to arrive, to involve, uh, um, uh, people not in terms of, of uh, is sexuality, um, but in terms of uh, um, I another, another kind of entertainment. And so, um, if, if, uh, if we read this, uh, this, uh, this kind of article and they, they put uh, in, a, in, a, in a niche of, um, of nothing, maybe of nothing, or, say, or, or, or they or they try only to to to, s to view uh, only aspect of uh, our parties. So it's very terrible, of course. And in so, do you want? Uh, so when uh, when Antonella was saying a really important important aspect, and I think we took in so much time. That we um, the homopathic about to advertise always the name of the DJs, as Antonella said. Um, and we try to stay outside the usual name dropping uh, marketing technique. We, we would like to use the marketing technique to try to, in a way, push the desire or be part, you know, part, part of something that actually is more appealing as a content more than, uh, of course, the DJ is a really important content inside a party, but the desire of being part of uh, something that is happening right now, it's more maybe important that the, the DJ name, if the music inside the party is really good, of course. Um, I would like to add uh, something about it. I think that the, our resource uh, is our public, not uh, a famous DJ. And 
our public uh, our public uh, uh, give more energy uh, every time and that's the point is that's the the, the specific uh, aspect uh, the, sp the the importance aspect in our party and so for for us this the, um, the aspect of multi multi multiculturalism uh, is uh, is only a practice uh, a direct practice that every time in every party we uh, um, um, we have so uh, about that, for example, we did, uh, we did a party that was called uh, Animal Farm, and of course was uh, thematized on Orwell novel and, uh, and, and uh, you know, like who was ra ruling uh, in the animal farm were the pigs. Today, uh, there is another concept for pigs. Uh, in the financial market, pigs stay for Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. They call us pigs, and we're not ruling at the moment. But yes, we, we do, in a way, <laughs> in the party scene at the moment, and that's, uh, that's actually making us a little bit more happier, or we're celebrating, actually, the death of the system. That's good. So yeah, exactly. Uh, th th that was a major point for me. The major point is the fact that there is, like, um, uh, uh, an event which is based of, of uh, an event management which is uh, producing completely different languages from the world of the uh, Berlin entertainment queer market and it's a firm it itself and uh, I know that homopathic never had any uh, grant or any money or any Unterstützung uh, from nobody than yourself and uh, that's exactly what I was saying yesterday in my intervention. What happens is that sometimes uh, when uh, uh, th there's a migrating point of view on cultural queer production, which is much more fluctuating and flexible, that uh, gets the interconnection directly to the territory. Uh, and what happens is that like little project takes space and time, develop themselves, create a market and this can be really conflicting in relationship to what was projected to be Berlin in terms of gentrification. So I think that like one of the, the biggest uh, meaning of homopathic uh, in the renewal, in the to total renewal of uh, its production language is like producing this contradictive black spot in the imaginary of the queer Berliner entertainment. And this is the biggest value. And this is declinated in a lot of different perspectives. Like, for example, I really like the, 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 the fact that uh, what, is promoted, what is promoted is the unknown. The fact that you go there, you don't really know what's happening. You have an imaginary, you have a trace, the Tod in Venedig, the Berlinale, but what's really happening there, you don't know. And you go there because you don't know, not because you know, not because you have a flyer where everything is clearly written. So you are promoting a scenario, a scene, more than a market. And I really like this contradiction going on because it produces a, a major contradiction, which is the market model of Berlin queer entertainment for me. So do you have any question about homopathic? There's a lot to say, huh? <laughs> you see the pictures? Yeah. Okay. No, you, you do it. I just want to make a connection on the on the co on the two other conferences that we had before, and uh, I was uh, really interested uh, with the Spackeria group, uh, the, the the centers that made the, the guy. I don't remember the name. Sorry, that they they decided to 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 uh, to elaborate the idea of privacy, you know, because nowadays it's quite interesting. And from this nerd's world, sorry, on my side, on my eyes, really interesting. This uh, needs. To, to reflect again about idea of privacy, and then come after the other guy speaking about the control verlust. 
And I think that uh, the L uh, LGBT scene here in Berlin have a lot to say in this kind of uh, uh, on this kind of perspective. Because if privacy is uh, and control is a matter also of privilege, Berlin taste uh, and experience uh, the privileged LGBT scene that any other place all over the world had. So if uh, the privacy as a LGBT, sorry, I don't want to use the word queer because I have too many problems to use this word here in this city, but still, the, this, uh, I think that the, the, the idea, the problem, the problematic tension between privacy and public uh, is, the is the big tension or is the tension in the, in the LGBT world all over the world. So how the tactical the strategies that you guys uh, in your in your days in your in your practice in in your uh, in your being actor of this city and being different uh, of what we were in another cities because here you have the privilege to be deal with the idea of control and the idea of privacy I think, I don't want to steal your word, but I think that your question was, is, it's uh, what are the strategy to produce a new form of public in relationship to the LGBT culture? Although I think that we have to do a specification because the LGBT community uh, has its own history, its own genealogy, and its own culture, which for me is not the queer ge genealogy, which is completely different because it moves from a criticism of identity, which is like the revendication of LGBT languages. So it's like completely but interconnected different worlds. Does somebody want to answer to that? Um. I'm, I'm, I'm against the mainstream, I'm against the underground. So, I think it's better to um, un, um, to to put ourselves in a in a new dimension. So I think that, that that's the point. That that's the matter. When I when I uh, when I do it, uh, what I, I have to do or what I, I want to do, I I get energy. I get uh, because I'm uh, I'm real and I'm I'm I'm. Mm, I'm, I'm trying to live uh, this this city and the, the spirit of this city in uh, in completely transformation. So that's the point. I don't I, I don't I don't I don't think about what the community is is doing. Also, also I'm interested about it, but the practice also the is 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 more important. I I think uh, with uh, with. Uh, um, also also better. I'm trying to do something new. I don't know if uh, it's new. But I'm trying. That's the point. Yeah, I think that it's like uh, it's very important to develop uh, independent spaces as strategies to produce the contradiction of the Berlin development model. So I think that the contradiction itself can be a development model. And producing a market around this contradiction can become a political tool for me. So uh, uh, this is my uh, my personal vision. Do you have a personal vision on that? What is your strategy uh, to uh, produce a new sense of public in terms of queer culture? Uh, if we speak about public, sometimes I think the public you speak about is really private. I think <laughs> uh, it's small little groups. So maybe uh, not all the people who, who think who are enemies are real enemies and they could be um, verbündete, was heißt das? <laughs> so I, I honestly, if I look at my life, I try to find new, was heißt denn verbündete auf Englisch? Uh, new connections uh, in people or group of people, you never expect that they could be in the mind uh, a real neighbor of your spirit. <laughs> and I have a question about that for, for you too. Being an, an opinion leader who uh, create like a, a, a public uh, relevance of contents through ex-Berliner, what kind of methodology do you apply to the selection of contents? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that and actually I don't think about 
the public at all. I'm not thinking about who I expect to is it yeah, who I expect to read it. I think more in terms of what's represented within the magazine, and then you know, let the chips fall where they will. I, I really don't. I mean, you're supposed to think about a reader in a way, but for me, it's more important that the most important things in Berlin are represented. And then, however they may be seen, it's, n it's from there, it's not up to me. It's, it's what is most important? Um, <coughs> most important in terms of producing, or in terms of representation? In terms of representation. In terms of representation, um, I think just a diversity. Um, I, you know, I don't say that I have to have, uh, or we have to have 10%, I don't know, queer events and 10% LGBT events or anything like that. Um, I think it's just important that these things were represented where they might have been overlooked before. And that I think I have my eye on a different part of the city than some other parts of ex Berliner does. And I think that's where I come in and, and I fit within the magazine. That I'm, I'm absolutely positive that, that the other people, and, and they're great, you know, people, but they have their own uh, focus, and, and my focus is, is on something different. So, uh, do you have any other question? Uh, do you have a question? Yeah, since we're speaking about uh, connections uh, between, I don't know, different scenes, different cultures, and so on, and you also mentioned several times uh, cultural imaginaries. Uh, you also talked about the unknown and the production of the unknown. Uh, you said uh, about uh, against both mainstream and underground. And uh, in all this talk also about definitions I, and, and connections, I, I feel that, I mean, as one of the organizers of this event, the Transmediale Festival, and in the context of what have happened the whole day and also yesterday, uh, try to make... Um, maybe some some contextualizing uh, uh, connections and questions so um yesterday w uh, many of you were probably not here but uh, some of you were and we we introduced a, a few teams also from from uh, uh, transmediale i spoke about an upcoming theme for our next festival which is bwp wap back when pluto was a planet which is a theme devoted to uh, actually uh, counter classification to coming up with impossible and unrealistic imaginaries of what culture cultural production can be so m you might know that pluto is not a planet anymore according to uh, official scientific knowledge but some people want to bring back pluto as a planet so this story is a kind of an absurd maybe story of how uh, 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 yeah classifications language science technologically mediated uh, uh, knowledge can overturn our uh, definitions of culture overnight. And, and this is also something that is very important to, I think, media culture and um, as a festival dealing with, with the relationship between technology, society and culture, uh, maybe specifically to the, uh, to the fact that we're doing now this panel and you're talking about queer culture in Berlin. And it was mentioned several times, for example, to give a very concrete example, uh, that, uh, okay, we use Facebook to promote ourselves. And when we, when we wanted to do this panel with you, you also asked us to do, I mean, I think you especially, uh, Warbert, asked us to do a Facebook uh, 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 group uh, event so that people could sign up, because the people that you will know will come will sign up through this. And in relation to the earlier panels we had, which spoke also about uh, some people spoke about the need to simply embrace these technologies because you can get your message across, you can be public. And other people talked about the need to uh, transform these tools and, and shape them in, in some way. And uh, so my question is very b broad in the end, like is there, a, is there an opportunity to connect uh, the qu queer culture uh, with queering of technologies, of creating new also technocultural imaginaries? And uh, in Berlin, how could that come uh, about? Is there an opportunity and who would be involved? <laughs> That's very simple, I would say. You have to be queer and you have to be an inventor. In what? Inventor. So then you uh, have something new. We don't like definition. 
No, we don't like the finish. Maybe I don't know. We are we are we are living uh, a new moment. Uh, so I think that our golden age is homopathic. <laughs> mm, no, about that, the golden age is ideas. It's not. Uh, it's uh, even opportunities, but it's mostly about ideas that's connected still with yesterdays. And yes. Uh, Facebook is an instrument, as is YouTube, where we publish everything. So I don't see really. And uh, about about the post privacy, uh, I wish I could say my mother, I would never have a political career. No, I, I think that the, the metaphor of accepting Pluto is very interesting in the tension of uh, accepting or not accepting languages, scientific languages, so the, even the scientific market that produces certification of languages. And uh, my personal approach is not dialectical, it's dialogical. So this means uh, being multiple in different contexts. So it means like being inside the market frame of social networks like Facebook and acting there and even stimulating different networks and different proposals. I was coming from a different network in my uh, historical political biography, for example. I was like in the beginning of the 90s producing like a... a uh, a subversive uh, uh, digital network that was called Cybernet, in which like it's a shared experience with Tatiana, and it was a network of bulletin board system even before an internet happened, and it was called Cybernet, and it was like time. It was a network. It was the concept of a network applied to uh, the squatting movement uh, in uh, Italy, and not just in Italy, even in Europe, with the European counter network. And I opened uh, a queer space of discussion there that was called nomadisms. And it was like a convergence of uh, countercultures, uh, illegal rape cultures, and queer experimentations. I am thinking that like in this contemporary moment, this kind of desire to produce new networks is quite anesthetized and lost. And it's very difficult to bring it back in the production of uh, new codes. Uh, I personally think that a dialogical approach is not like simply postmodern, but is a way to produce, as you're working about inclusion or exclusion of Pluto, a tension that creates a changing. So this is my personal opinion. You were speaking about the camp yesterday, right? The camp? No? Maybe I have to stand here. No, I was talking about Campus Party, which is a completely different event. It's more related to education. It's a college, that's why it's called Campus Party, because it's about, it's for college students. Um, I can uh, elaborate more about that later, but I, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the question that Christian uh, just, yeah? Christoph, sorry, uh, just expressed in a, such a, great way I think uh, that this p the existence of this panel in this uh, this particularly theme pa panel as a queer panel um, in in the context of this connecting and networks and communities uh, is interesting because we're talking about not defining you're talking proposing an anti-definition of things but in a way it's really interesting that you have to do it from the position of a queer identity because in a way it's it's kind of a representative of a moment in time i think where everyone is in the middle of a flux we don't know where we're going but we have to start from where we are so you are in, in this uh, uncomfortable or funny position where no we don't want to be put in boxes but this panel is kind of interesting because uh, it is a queer panel in in a way and it, it's in a space where it's usually not so it's so uh, it's really fascinating. I, I spend a lot of time in technology-oriented meetings, and this is like the second meeting that I know of, which is specifically uh, uniting technology and queerness. So, okay, I think it's fine to get out of the box, but I think it's still cool to keep some categories loosely while we find uh, the way to totally escape. I don't know. It's yeah. Uh, I, and just one more thing about the campus thing. Um, 
I didn't, uh, maybe I wasn't so clear yesterday, but it's, a, it's an event which is coming to Berlin from the 22nd to the 26th of August. It will be in Tempelhof Airport and it will be about 10,000 students uh, which are expected to attend. They will camp in the Tempelhof Airport, maybe that's where the camp <laughs> interpretation came from, uh, 24 hours. And this festival will be about technology uh, from many facets, mostly scientific, and they're bringing like the big brains of our planet, uh, that they can be found, famous or non-famous, experimental or established, uh, like inventor of the internet or vice presidents, uh, all kinds of things. And I think it's important, like I said yesterday, that the media and the art community gets involved in this big event because it has a, can have a huge impact on an international community, which is not our typical community. It's not the art consumers, it's not the queer uh, party people, it's uh, young people who can bring ideas and who can also get ideas from us. So I think also now that I see this panel, the queer community should be involved in this, and so, uh, or the non-identified queer community. <laughs> yeah. So it's a c campus party, and you can Google it, and it's coming to Berlin. Do you want to add something? Yeah, I wanted just to connect with the question of Christopher <coughs> because. Um, I also find really interesting this analysis of how Facebook is, for example, used in this specific community because, um, uh, of course, I know that is uh, in, this in this sense a kind of powerful tool for connection, but at the same time, so I think if we also try to reflect that technologies are not uh, neutral, then you can also see that Facebook is really something that is also pushing you towards a so sort of capitalization of desire because the fact that you always have to push, I like, that is really, uh, you know, one way to seeing the way you can like the things. So I think that is a kind of contradiction really related to your way of uh, experience desire that is pretty uh, polyphonic, I would say. You are even speaking about uh, different possibility of uh, defining the imaginary. So that is a contradiction that I think it's important and I so I connect to his question that uh, maybe if you want to be really, um, I mean, trying to uh, find new paths for uh, open the imaginary that is also involving technology. Uh, do you want to answer? Yeah. Of course, the aim is always uh, uh, it would be would be really nice, but we we wouldn't have the same opportunity to not print. Pl uh, f uh, print flyer, for example, and f f f fill the houses of everybody in Berlin with our flyer, paper flyer, without having this tool, then uh, we could even just cancel the Facebook profile today and we will have the same people next week anyway. <laughs> but uh, but I, will, I could do that, but Steve would be always thank, thank to this tool we used for a long time. Mr. Tai was wanted to say something, please. Mr. Tai is like the producer of the idea of homopathic, so. I just wanted to answer to Tatiana because it was uh, really interesting. It, it, because like, it's totally, I think, the um, one of the um, reason why is came from totally from how it's made the digital. And this made this one, zero. That means you like, you don't like. One, zero, <laughs> simply. Uh, and this is what it's all. When we will have a quanti quant uh, quantum on pr programmation, maybe we will have also, also all our ideas on it, but we don't have. That's why, and also the market wants like this, and they wants to have uh, the one and the zero just, and not all else. Uh, I really agree with you, but what I want to put the accent on is the contradiction, is the fact that you have like, uh, you use the economical frame uh, of, of Facebook to communicate this event, and then you're promoting an analog culture inside it, you know? So what is interesting to me, to my personal point of view of this project, is the fact that the revealing of the unknown, uh, the now and here as an analogical experience, create a contradictive tension within the digital imaginary. And to me, at the moment, in the post-modern post moment, it's the only way to produce uh, a struggle in terms of changing having a dialogical approach, which is not an heterotopian static energy, 
but as a, a consciousness of its own multiplicity, as a tool of political transformation. Okay, so one more thing, talking about the present. I just received this book in the mail today, so I want to mention it. It's called Rise of the Video Game Sinsters, How Freaks, Normals, Amateurs, Artists, Dreamers, Dropouts, Queers, Housewives, and People Like You are Taking Back an Art Form. Uh, it's a book about m making video games. It's a book about how to create them if, if you're a programmer or not, it shows the tools, and it's written uh, by a queer person, and I think it's really interesting. I guess I'm kind of an education evangelist, and I love programming, and I like hacking, so I would like to invite the queer community, because now there is a kind of rise of programming as a fundamental language that will be expected like basic literacy for people in the future. So I think all the communities, it's important that somehow get connected to understanding programming. And now there's a rise of women in programming that I just mentioned yesterday, like in the last month, there have been three new groups of uh, teaching workshops and women organizing themselves to learn programming. So I propose uh, to the queer community to connect to this side of the technology, to creating your own tools and see what happens. Because I have only read the beginning of this book, but it's really interesting because it's proposing the, this question, how do you queer technology? You produce it yourself. Okay, time is running by. I thank Transmediale, Trans, uh, Club Transmediale, Tatiana Bazzichelli for inviting us, Lena Brown, Walter Kressel, and the Homopathics. And thanks, everybody. <laughs>